By late Thursday night, Jamal Murray, Scal Abissier, and Tyler Eulis will all know their NBA destinations. But truly, sometimes the waiting is the hardest part. And it was a good thing the defense was good early because the offense was pitiful yeah. early in the first yeah. half, and the Wildcats needed the defense to kind of carry them at least to halftime mm -hmm. until the offense could get some rhythm. Mm -hmm. You told me the other day that Minnesota would be a good destination, and but you wouldn't care exactly who you went to. Denver, a team that maybe not a lot of people projected you to go to. How do you feel now that you are a Nugget? When Kentucky goes on the road, the Big Blue Nation shows up. But not all destinations are created equal. This week, a smaller number of Kentucky fans showed up in Iowa, creating an almost quiet atmosphere at times on Thursday night. And the players noticed. Well, guys, this morning consisted of practicing. This afternoon, it was all about answering the questions from the media. And tomorrow, the game is played, the 39th annual McDonald's All-American Game here at the United Center in Chicago. And if you think about just the sheer numbers, they are impressive. John Calipari, in six seasons at Kentucky, has put 25 players in the NBA. 19 of those players were first-round draft picks. He has the potential to add at least three more first-round draft picks tomorrow night. Here in New York, covering the NBA draft. Kentucky's dynamic duo there, Tyler Eulis, Jamal Murray, and we form a dynamic I duo. I say, think Lee K. Howard is right here. I appreciate it. I'll be Tyler Eulis. You'll be Jamal Murray. All I right. Like that. That's fine. He has become the leader on this team as a sophomore. Now, he's a guy that could have gone pro last year, could have been one of the one and dones with some of his fellow freshmen, but he chose to come back instead, and now he's the unquestioned leader on this team, much like Tyler Eulis was a year ago. You know, we were talking to the players. They're not really familiar with the rivalry. Near as much as the fans are when you're when the NCAA brackets first come out Rob this is one of those games that everyone circled as a potential second round matchup the 12th ranked Kentucky women's basketball team has several impressive wins on their resume this season but it's really impressive when you consider that Matthew Mitchell's team has been dressing out just nine players each game but the coach told me on Sunday that he's not allowing that to be an excuse one thing for certain Kentucky fans know all there is to know about their Wildcats but how much do they know about the team that Kentucky is playing against tonight? We thought we'd find out. Do you have any idea what state Stony Brook University is from? I have no idea. Like, who is Stony Brook? And, right? like, how do they even make the tournament? What state is Stony Brook University located in? New York. Well, you do know. Do you know specifically where it's at? No. Stony, Stony Brook. Stony, Stony Brook, Stony Brook New York. Yeah. Long Island. Do you know what the mascot is for Stony Brook? Uh, it's, I think it's like a stone wall or something like that. Like, <laughs> it's like a wall, right? That would make sense, right? They could be the, the fighting stone walls. I think something like that, yeah. Um, for sure it's an elephant. It's, it's, it could be an elephant, I right? I made that up. <laughs> what, if I, what if I told you it was a sea wolf? A sea wolf? A sea wolf. I know of a sea horse. I don't know of a sea wolf. <laughs> What's a sea? Oh, that like a... What is a sea wolf? What is a sea wolf? Um... Some type of water animal, I'd say. <laughs> so whether it's an elephant or a stone wall or a sea wolf, Kentucky fans do know one thing for certain. Who's going to win the game tonight? K-A-T-S, Kets, Kets, Kets. Hopefully Kentucky, like I said, because I got them in my final four. Tonight. It's going to be Kentucky for sure, hands down. Kets, most definitely. We'll be, we'll be here Saturday night to take on them Hoosiers. So. In a true David versus Goliath meeting on the Rupp Arena floor tonight, Kentucky hosting Asbury for its final exhibition game. But unlike in the Bible, David didn't really have a chance in this one. The Wildcats were running the floor all night. Derek Willis out in front of the pack. He throws it down. The first of many high-flying highlights. I mean, it gets you excited every time yeah, basketball season comes around. But it's still football season as well. Swaggy Cal showed up <laughs> for yesterday's media day. And Coach Calipari has every reason to be excited about this weekend. Report are that as many as 10 of the nation's top recruits were in town tonight. Let's head down to the Madhouse on Main for the first time ever. A blue carpet welcoming back all former Kentucky players in attendance. Jack Goose Gibbons and Jared Polson among the 70 former players returning. Then, of course, the players introduced to a capacity <laughs> crowd awesome. by none other than ring announcer <laughs> Michael Buffer. Let's get ready to rumble. Madison Southern started the season off with a bang, running out to four straight wins before running into Tate's Creek in Pulaski County. He is Lee K. Howard, the father. And can you believe it, father? 
the last week of the regular season in high school football. I can't believe that, son. <laughs> Which means the playoffs are right around the corner, and it will be an exciting sprint to the finish. And, of course, the state championships the first weekend of December. The party bus rolling into Georgetown for another 6A game. It's Ryle and Scott County. The Raiders, one of just a handful of teams across the state that are still unbeaten going into the night. Scott County, of course, one of the state's powerhouses. First quarter, tied at 7-7. The handoff goes to Jacob Burton, and he picks up three yards and the touchdown. 14-7 Scott County. Riles next possession. Tanner Morgan completes the pass to Jake Chisholm. He follows his blockers in for the score. That'll get him riled up. Tied at 14 apiece. After another Ryle touchdown made it 20-14. to Scott County's Burton plunges in for another score. Extra point made it 21-20. Cardinals. Ryle, though, had the answer. Morgan finds Bryce Ashley for the four-yard touchdown. Ryle back on top, 27-21. Just before the half, it's Burton again. Mm. Third score of the mm. half. The team scored 55 combined points in the first half. And get this, Scott County picked off a pass in the final seconds to seal a win, 42-40. Well, now to Class 3A and Lexington Catholic playing in its 12th consecutive regional final tonight in search of its sixth straight trip to the semifinals. And it's like deja vu all over again. LexCath meeting Central in this round for the second year in a row. The Knights won that game last season 14-13. How would they do tonight? LexCath leading rusher Damian Jones out the remainder of the season after tearing his ACL and meniscus mm. last week. So the Knights turn to the quarterback, Kirk Fago on the running game. And on the Knights' first possession, Fago delivers with a 29-yard touchdown run. Made it 7-0 Catholic. Yeah, he's like, I did that. Second <laughs> quarter, Yellow Jackets with the answer. Some tough running by Corey Johnson. He's going to take it in from 13 yards out. Ties the game at seven apiece. Everybody's posing for the camera. Six seconds left in the half. Fourth down. Central had its field goal kicker out. But there they ran off the offense, ran anyway. Tossed to Johnson for the touchdown. Time expires to put the Jackets on top. 14-7 to seven at halftime. And Central ends Lexington Catholic season 30-7. to seven. I'm so excited. To watch you guys be against them. Especially after that, that last situation. Yeah. In the arena of life, Did you warm up we are measured not by how we fall, but how we get back up. Hilton, uh, Coach Shelby Hilton had worked her entire life to be a college gymnast. I knew this is what I wanted to do, so I worked really hard to get to where I wanted to go. Boy, she slings that out, but the Florida native realized that dream with a scholarship to the University of Kentucky. She was a scrappy competitor and she was always smiling. That's another thing about her. She was just, just a happy kid. But during her senior season, I just remember not feeling good. On a trip to her home state to face the Florida Gators. I was just more like in a daze. Shelby Hilton will lead off. Her gymnastics career and outlook on life took a sudden turn. You hear surreal all the time. It's exactly what it was. It took me a second to register. You know, in a strange way, it was such a blessing. Hilton was rushed to a local hospital where a CT scan amazingly revealed no damage from her fall. I tell everybody who asks me, I say it is a blessing. What it did reveal was four spots on her brain. Because God had a reason for all that to happen. Medulloblastoma. At first I thought my life was over. Brain cancer. I lost a lot of weight, lost a lot of things. Shelby was in the competition for her life. I was a strong athlete and I'm a strong girl. There's no way I like could not get through that. I'm gonna get through it. Battling cancer is a team sport. But just beating cancer wasn't enough. One team, one team, Shelby strong! One year later, Shelby has returned to school to finish her degree. That was my ultimate goal. Are you ready for your senior night? Yeah, of course. And have that senior night she missed out on. Big Blue Nation, please give a warm welcome to former UK gymnast Shelby Hilton. I knew I had a purpose. When I have a purpose, I want to reach my goal. Welcome back, baby. Thank you. I think it was just a huge blessing. In Lexington, Lee K. Howard, 
WKYT.